This is a time like no other, a time when we are conflicted with hope and worry, where the world is on the cusp of a monumental change yet has been stuck in the cycle of a global pandemic. But this is a time of celebration and pride looking back over your accomplishments. We are in a time of celebrating you and what you will contribute to the world. Today is your day. Today is a culmination of years of hard work. Today is your graduation day. And while things are not the same as they once were and our traditions recreated anew, it is all done to celebrate you. Welcome to your 2021 Virtual Convocation Celebration. We're here to acknowledge and celebrate your hard work, your dedication, and all of your accomplishments. And we do so in the spirit of thanksgiving. Wat kunualado, Santi Smith, Dagalunyakwa, Nyungnyas, Gongwehoi, Gayangehaga, Se Watohosios, Ga Nagaliwesa, Ne Ona, Angelio Heste, Ne Ganawala Donsula. The purpose of the words of thanksgiving, the Ohandu Galiwadeguan, is to unite our mind and heart, to acknowledge, give thanks, affirm interconnections cultivate compassion and kindness, and to recognize the human responsibility for sustaining and living in balance and peace with all creation in all of our relations. Now our minds are one. It's important at this time to acknowledge people who are struggling, who are hurting. Let these words offer serenity to their mind and heart. We give thanks to all people, our ancestors, our family and friends. Now our minds are one. Dayatilu wenado ne yatini stoha johunjade. Eto nayontohoge ne nguatnigula. We give thanks to our Mother Earth, for she provides us with everything that we need to survive and thrive. Now our minds are one. Dayatini walado ne gane galunyo. Eto nayontohoge ne nguatnigula. We give thanks to the waters, from the oceans to the streams, to the waters flowing in our body. Water is life. Now our minds are one. Daiti nuwalaro ne gonjung sua. Eto nayontohage ne naguat nigula. We give greetings and thanks to the fish who help to purify the water and provide us with nourishment. Now our minds are one. Daiti nuwalaro ne. Yotunduni, eto nayontohage ne nagua nigula. We give thanks to the plants, from the grasses to the sacred medicines that help to purify and strengthen our body and our mind. Now our minds are one. Daiti nuwalaro ne odzit no wasu'a, eto nayontohage ne nagua nigula. We give thanks and greetings to the insects who help to pollinate the plants and teach us how to live in balance with all creation. Now our minds are one. Dayati nuwalaro ne jon hekwa eto nayontohage ne nguatnigula. We give thanks to our sustenance foods, to the three sisters, corn, beans, and squash. Now our minds are one. Dayati nuwalaro ne wa ya niunta Eto nayontohoge ne nguat nigula. We give thanks to the fruit who help to nourish our body. Now our minds are one. Dayati nuwalaro ne gondirion. Eto nayontohoge ne nguat nigula. We give greetings and thanks to all of the animals who sacrifice their lives to help sustain us and teach us to live in balance. Now our minds are one. Dayati nuwalaro ne 
dit dans un goût, hein. Et ton n'ayant ton hange, ne ne guant ne goût là. We give thanks to the birds whose beautiful song help to uplift our spirit and bring peace and calm to our hearts. Now our minds are one. Daiti ni walaro ne galunda ongu a. Eto na yonto hange ne na gua ni gua. We give thanks to the trees. We cannot live without the oxygen that they provide. Their roots and sap provide nourishment and cleansing for our body. Now our minds are one. Daiti ni walaro ne zower la wunyer. Eto na yonto hange ne na gua ni gua. We give thanks and greetings to the circulating winds who travel the earth bringing new life and breath. Now our minds are one. Daiti ni walaro ne la di werlas eto na yonto hoge ne na gua ni guna. We give our greetings to the grandfather thunderers for purifying the air and awakening the earth. Now our minds are one. Daiti ni walaro ne anjonge ni galakwa Eto na yonto hoge ne na gua ni guna. We give thanks to our eldest brother Sun, who appears each morning to provide sunshine, protection, and sustenance for all living things. Now our minds are one. Daiti ni walaro ne asata ne kwa wa nirele. Eto na yonto hoge ne na gua ni guna. We give our greetings and thanks to Grandmother Moon. For her powerful pull on our waters and connection to women and birth, now our minds are one. Daiti ni walaro ne yo gisto warlunyo eto na yonto hoge ne na guat ni gula. We give thanks to the stars and the cosmos for providing us with guidance and direction. Now our minds are one. Daiti ni walaro ne dayon kiyarado eto na yonto hoge ne na guat ni gula. We give thanks to our protectors, our spiritual guardians who provide clarity of mind and peace in our hearts. Now our minds are one. Dazi dawanuwalaro ne sungwayandiso, eto na yonto hage ne nguat nigula. We give thanks and greetings to creation, to the great spirit, to the great mystery, and the creative energy that lives in everywhere and in everything. Now our minds are one. Da eto. Niyawanage da eto. The Thanksgiving address is a daily affirmation which places humanity in context to the immensity of the living universe and affirms the responsibility of human beings to be humble stewards of the natural world and to always demonstrate gratitude. I am thankful to be here with you today and to share these words before all else. Niyawe. Thank you. As you embark on a new chapter in your life, a life as a McMaster graduate, we have been reflecting on what being a Mac grad means to us. As your provost, it means so much. To me, a Mac grad is full of innovative and life-changing ideas that will have an impact on our local communities and reach the corners of the globe. Congratulations and good luck. To me, a Mac grad is ready for anything. You're empowered with critical thinking and inquiry-based learning. You're ready for the challenges you'll face, and being a Mac grad means you'll face them head on. To me, a Mac grad can see the inner workings of the world around them, and how people and nature can coexist in harmony. That you'll rise to the challenge to restore the damage facing our global environment. To me, a Mac grad is determined, determined to try new ways of thinking, determined to make mistakes and learn from them, and determined to inspire those at home and at work. Warm congratulations to our 2021 McMaster University graduates. You're our newest Mac grads. Now let's officially welcome you into our community of scholars.
Madam Chancellor, on behalf of the McMaster University Senate, I present to you these candidates in absentia in order that you may confer the appropriate degrees upon them and I bear witness that they are worthy and suitable. Graduands, by my authority and that of the McMaster University Senate, I have the great pleasure to admit those in absentia to their individual degrees at McMaster University with all the rights and privileges pertaining to those degrees. My sincere congratulations to you all. Yo Yanale.
Thank you.
continue the celebrations with messages from your dean, honorary doctorates, and valedictorian. Congratulations to the class of 2021. Your dean and faculty celebrate you. Congratulations to McMaster Science graduates. We were so honored to have you as students, and now we are so very proud to have you as alumni. And finally, we can't wait to see how you will transform the world through science. Honorary degrees are a long-standing tradition of recognizing the local and global impact of our great community leaders. We recognize them today and begin with a reflection between our Chancellor, Santi Smith, and President and Vice Chancellor, Dr. David Farrar.
awarding an honorary degree, it's for extraordinary achievement. It could be local, it could be national, it could be international, but it is the achievement that in granting this degree will inspire our students, our graduates at this point, to go out and leave and do something equally extraordinary. I think the role of honorary degrees as well is to inspire students, but it's also to look at an individual's journey, to be able to um, see some of the decisions that they made, and for a lot of them, they, what contributions they've made to society, to their community. Many are offering their gifts of knowledge, and I think that's just uh, a way of showcasing and highlighting the importance of uh, individual contributions to humanity. Yeah. The impact uh, of an honorary degree to McMaster is to acknowledge achievement but also to acknowledge a journey of uh, going from academic into your life and work. So from my perspective as a Haudenosaunee person, it is our belief that everyone is, has a gift and once you find your gift, you hone it, you develop it and then you're to share it. And so I think that's really important when we look to honorary degrees, the impact that they have in sharing their gifts with others. Their gift by coming and accepting an honorary degree also brings honor and distinction to the university. They provide us with the inspiration uh, that we're looking for. They provide our students with the inspiration. Honorary degree recipients are uh, our special people, they're exceptional people. A Canadian university has recently announced that they're giving an honorary degree uh, to one of the Toronto Raptors, to Kyle Lowry. And uh, in uh, giving the degree, they're giving it for the contributions he's made to underrepresented or um, at-risk groups in Toronto and also in Philadelphia. They. Uh, are also uh, giving it to him for his contributions to Black Lives Matter and the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, there was a reporter that asked Kyle, um, what kind of doctorate will you be getting? And uh, he kind of smiled and then said, I'm getting a doctor of greatness. Uh, and, and I think that that's actually what honorary degrees are about. They're celebrating somebody who's done something great and they're passing that on to our students. Yes. I think that's um, also looking forward to the list of honor honorary degrees representing the diversity of the McMaster campus in many different nations, many different disciplines, different ways of studying and uh, ways of working and developing your career. So I think it's inspirational. Absolutely is inspirational. The inspirational story of Anne Innes Dagg goes back to the 1950s when she conducted the first systematic study of wild animals in Africa, an effort that blazed the trail for scientists like Jane Goodall. Dr. Dagg's study of giraffes and her subsequent book, The Giraffe, Its Biology, Behavior, and Ecology, became the Bible for giraffe biologists. Dr. Dagg held academic posts at the University of Guelph and then the University of Waterloo, but faced profoundly sexist policies that inspired her to advocate tirelessly for women in science and for equity, diversity, and inclusivity more broadly. She even established her own publishing company, Otter Press, to create more opportunities for women writers. Dr. Dagg has written or co-written nearly two dozen influential books, including a reference book of urban ecology, Camel Quest, Research on the Saharan Camel, The 50% Solution, Why Should Women Pay for Men's Culture, and Smitten My Giraffe, My Life as a Citizen Scientist. She is also the author of Five Giraffes, which earned the 2016 Lan Anderson Award for the Best Canadian Sciences Writing for Children. Dr. Dagg is an honorary member of the Canadian Society for Zoologists. She also received the Pioneer Award from the International Association of Giraffe Care Professionals, and now that award is named in her honor. She has earned the Human Rights Award from the Kitchener-Waterloo Status of Women Group 
along with a second honor that has her name on it, the Dr. Ann Innes Dag Lifetime Achievement Award from the Giraffid International Conference. It's a special privilege to recognize Dr. Dag's lifetime of contributions as a trailblazing scientist, author, and advocate by conferring upon her the degree Doctor of Science, honoris causa, and you should definitely read more about Dr. Dag's incredible career on the McMaster Convocation microsite. Anne Innes Dag, by the authority of McMaster University Senate, I have the great pleasure to confer upon you the degree Doctor of Science, honoris causa, in McMaster University with all the rights and privileges pertaining to that degree. Dear students, faculty, and honored guests, it is an honor to receive this degree from this prestigious university. McMaster has a special place in my heart as my father, Harold Innes, received his undergraduate degree over 100 years ago in 1916, when the McMaster campus was based in Toronto. He must have made quite an impression because in the 1970s, the Innes Library was established as part of the McMaster University of Libraries. My dad had a lifelong passion in the field of education and love for learning, which was passed on to me. I have spent my life pursuing my educational passion of understanding animal behavior, especially of giraffes. I traveled to South Africa in the 1950s at the age of 23 before anyone else had made such an attempt. However, it has now become well known that my career was sidetracked by the institutional sexism that was rampant in academia. Despite my scientific accomplishments and teaching record, three different Ontario universities discriminated against me because I was a woman. At the time, I fought back and took my case to the Ontario Supreme Court. Something tells me that if that were to happen today, I would have a lot of you on my side, and we have demanded the changes that I'm now starting to see in our society. Despite having to live with these setbacks, I have written over 20 books and 60 scientific articles, and had an award-winning documentary made about my life, The Woman Who Loves Giraffes. Looking back over my experiences, there are two key messages I would like to give you. First, never stop learning. This degree is just the first step in a long journey ahead of listening and reading and writing and watching and thinking, which are all points on a compass that lead to a fulfillment. Secondly, keep pushing. You will be faced with many challenges that will impede from reaching your goals. Find another way around and reach out to others who will help you. Look for those mentors who will bring the best out of you and allow you to shine. Thank you so much and long live giraffes. is a Mac grad who also earned a graduate degree from the University of Victoria. She then spent more than a decade studying heart disease, cancer, and genetic conditions before dedicating herself to exploration, the kind of exploration that involves traveling to and through more than 35 countries using mostly bikes and rowboats. After becoming the first woman to row across the Atlantic Ocean from mainland to mainland, Miss Angus shared National Geographic's Adventurer of the Year Award with her husband Colin in 2007. Her book, Rowboat in a Hurricane, became a national bestseller, and with Colin, she co-wrote Road Trip from Scotland to Syria by Orr. That's road spelled R-O-W-E-D, by the way. She is also the author of All of Odyssey, Searching for the Secrets of the Fruit that Seduced the World, and she has co-produced documentary films, including Beyond the Horizon, which was named Best Adventure Film at the Taos Mountain Film Festival. Miss Angus and her husband founded Angus Rowboats, a company that designs adventure boats, as well as open ocean robotics, which develops autonomous data-gathering watercraft. A recipient of McMaster's Arch Award, Miss Angus has also received the Distinguished Alumni Award from the University of Victoria. In 2016, she was named one of Canada's greatest women explorers by Canadian Geographic, and she has been listed as one of North America's leading adventurers by Explore Magazine. She is a fellow of the Canadian Geographic Society. Julie Angus is a McMaster alumna, global adventurer, environmental advocate, author, filmmaker, and entrepreneur 
whose diverse career and contributions are certainly worthy of receiving the degree Doctor of Science, Honoris Causa. I encourage you to read more about Dr. Angus and her incredible accomplishments on the McMaster Convocation microsite. Julie Angus, by the authority of McMaster University Senate, I have the great pleasure to confer upon you the degree Doctor of Science, Honoris Causa, in McMaster University with all the rights and privileges pertaining to that degree. Congratulations, McMaster graduates. You have achieved a remarkable accomplishment, but the fun is just about to start. When I graduated from McMaster University, I could have never predicted the route my life would take. But in that uncertainty, there is beauty and possibility to achieve great things, change the world, be happy. I discovered that I'm an explorer. I love asking questions, learning new things, pushing boundaries. That's why I studied sciences at McMaster, why I rowed across an ocean, and why I started a company building robot boats to explore our oceans. You are now about to become an explorer. In fact, you already are. You finished one journey and you're about to begin another. And you'll explore a different world, one in science, business, finance, or something else. I am here to tell you that you should be an explorer, that you should find your own path, be your own guide. Don't let others tell you what you can do and don't let fear stand in the way of achieving your dreams. Be brave and be prepared to face adversity. Challenges that seem so great, they may feel insurmountable, but you will overcome them and you will be stronger for it and it will help you achieve your dreams. When I rode across the Atlantic Ocean, we were hit by two hurricanes. There were times when I thought we couldn't survive, but making it through it made me stronger and more capable of achieving my goals. And you too will get hit by a hurricane. Maybe you already have. It could be not getting the promotion you wanted or the relationship or getting sick, but you will make it through it and it will make you stronger for it so that you can go out there and achieve your goals. As an explorer, your job is to persevere, to be adaptable, to make it through to the other side where you will be stronger and more capable of achieving your dreams. You can achieve your dreams and to do that, you need to be brave and to accept that there will be challenges, but to know that you can make it through to the other side. We're all explorers. I explore the world of ocean and adventure, and you will go explore the world that fascinates you. There is a big, beautiful world of opportunity that lies ahead of you. Now go out and explore it. Next, you will enjoy the enthusiasm and energy from your own valedictorian. I congratulate them alongside the entire class of 2021. Hello class of 2021. I am so honored and proud to be speaking on behalf of this year's graduating class. Even though I am the one up here representing you all, I want to start off by thanking you all. My sincerest thanks to each and every one of you for making me so proud to be a McMaster graduate. You have all contributed to making McMaster not only a community, but a home. And I will forever cherish the time that I've spent there. Wow, I'm sure when we first stepped onto campus on the first day of Welcome Week all those years back, we didn't think this was how our time on campus would come to an end. But let's not let that bring us down. We did it everyone, we made it. All those all-nighters studying for exams in the library or waiting in the always ridiculous student center Starbucks lineup. We did it and it was all worth it. But enough reminiscing, let's talk about the future. We are all living through such unprecedented times. But we all need to take a second, sit back, and be proud of where we are right now, and think about all the amazing things that have yet to happen for us. Maybe you're uncertain about your career path, uncertain about if you'll be refunded that grad trip you paid for a while ago, or just uncertain about what's gonna happen next. 
we are still McMaster Marauders, and we do not give up when things are uncertain and tough. We venture out into the unknown and reach for the stars. I wish nothing but good health and success to each and every one of you. And although we can all toss our caps up in the air in that cliche way we see in the movies, this is just as good. Hats off to you all. Even though our time on campus was cut short, we will forever be McMaster Marauders. So go on and kill it out there, everyone. The sky's the limit. Congratulations, my fellow graduates, my friends, and see you at the 10-year reunion. This concludes your virtual spring 2021 convocation ceremony. Please visit registrar.mcmaster.ca forward slash convocation 2021 to continue your celebrations. From all of us, congratulations and welcome to our community of McMaster Scholars.